Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today's project is going to be a peacock. For this project, you want to start by centering your shirt using the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. This is going to create symmetry. So I'm using a washable marker to mark out my center points. Then I'm going to tuck one sleeve inside the other sleeve. I'm going to line up the seams in the underarm and along the shoulder. And if your shirt has side seams, line those up too. And then I find those marks that I made and I give them a pinch and then I give it a shake and I'll lay it down on the table and I'll smooth out the one side. It'll, it'll either be the back side or the front side. And then I pull the other part over and that brings the front of the shirt and the back of the shirt together. That way it will dye evenly. I think that's as good as I'm going to get it. So the next step is to decide where you want the center of your pattern to be. And I like to come down a couple inches below the underarm and I make a little pinch and I'm using the microwave splatter guard and a hemostat. So let's see, I have the top of the shirt up on the table and the sleeve to the left. And I spun the hemostat clockwise, okay? So I'm using my opposite hand to create the pleats. Many of you know this fold pattern as the spider fold, and it is. The only difference is, is going to be the die placement. So once you've gone as far as you can using the splatter guard, you want to unclick your hemostat and gently wiggle it out. This spiral isn't very large, so I'm going to secure it by using my second favorite rubber bands. And I do have a link for them down below in the description box, along with everything else that I use for tie-dye. So make sure you check that out. What I'm doing now is tightening up my spiral. That's the one downside to the splatter guard. It doesn't create an overly tight spiral. So I'm just pulling on those loose tails and tucking them into the nearest rubber band. I like to mark out my pattern using a washable marker. Now this is not a necessary step, but I find that it helps me stay on track when adding my die. And I'm just making sure to have all of the pieces of pie to intersect through the center of the spiral. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the die. And this is going to be a muck ice die. So that being said, I did not need to use the ice barrier, but I put the ice barrier there just so I wouldn't have to put so much ice. It would keep it around the shirt instead of me having to fill up the entire container. So either way will work. I was making a lot of shirts that day and I was running low on ice. So um, I just thought that this would be a quick and easy way to conserve. I love this color palette that I'm working with. I use it as often as possible. I think all the colors really complement one another. I get asked quite a bit from new dyers, um, what colors of dye should you get? You know, if you're on a limited budget and where do you start? Well, I say always start with the primary colors. That would be fuchsia red, lemon yellow, and turquoise. Because from those three colors, you can make an entire rainbow. You can mix colors, you know, you can make orange and green and purple out of those. And then for colors from that, 
I say go for it and get jade green. It's absolutely beautiful. But what I recommend you do is go into each color category, like start with, you know, um, let's say the reds. You know, um, pick out a red that you like. I really like Chinese red. It's a really beautiful red. And then, you know, go into the yellows. Well, if you have lemon yellow, you don't really need a yellow. Um, deep orange is great. And then let's see, what. let's go into like the pink category. You know, pick your favorite pink. I like to go to hot pink. I just think it's great. Um, it's not good for ice dyeing, but it's a good summertime liquid dye. Um, in the blues, uh, well, cerulean blue is like the go-to, but I think bluebird is a lot prettier. And in the purples, grape is a wonderful color, but I'd say my favorite is deep purple. And then you must get raven black. Raven black is a definite need for making tie-dye. It just makes the colors pop. And then get yourself a gray. Um, I love gunmetal gray, but Timberwolf is really popular. Um, let's see. And then for colors that split, people seem to love shiitake. I don't care for it really. I mean, I think it's pretty, but eh. um, black cherry, that's another one. I mean, the list could go on and on. I, I love all of the colors. <laughs> I mean, they're just, they're gorgeous to me. Um, for a dark green, the new emerald green is beautiful. So, I mean, it's really hard to pick and choose, but I'd say start with the primaries and then just look at the list and, you know, pick what you love, you know, go for your favorite colors. You can never go wrong with the purples or the blues. Um, they're beautiful, but the blues are all very similar. So Bluebird is a really good place to start. And um, well, what do you guys think? Give some input on this. If, you know, in hindsight is 2020 type of a thing. Like now that you have so many colors, what colors, you know, do you recommend to start with? Next, I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and then I add the ice. And as I mentioned before, this is going to be a muck dye. So I'm just going to let that ice melt and let the project sit in the muck water. And that's going to create some nice deep lines. Now, it looks scary, but you wanna set it and forget it and trust the muck. And then you wanna let it batch for at least 24 hours. This project batched for the full 48 hours at the time I made this shirt, it was still really cold in Oregon. Look at that muck water. I know it looks scary, but you have to trust the muck. It really works. So trust the muck and trust me. So this shirt ended up sitting for about three days. Um, I just couldn't get to the rinse out and that's okay because after 48 hours, not much is happening um, chemically between the soda ash and the Procyon dye. And plus it was sitting in the muck water so it wasn't going to dry out, so you know, no biggie. So now it's time for the rinse out and you wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. Then you know you're ready to take it to the washing machine. And I like to do however many hot water cycles it takes using Kirilon. And what I mean by that is my washing machine goes for 18 minutes before it drains to do the rinse cycle. So I stop it, I take a clear plastic cup and I scoop up the water. And if it still looks like there's a lot of color in there, I'll do a second hot water cycle using Kirilon. And I'll check that water. And usually it's pretty much clear by then. Um, then I know they're well rinsed. I do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft, and that's a professional textile detergent. And I get both of those, Kirilon and Millsoft, from Dharma Trading Company. And there are links down below in the description box. It just makes it easy for you to find what you need. And then I'll put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Mm -hmm. 
Well, here it is, guys. Here's our peacock muck ice dye after it's been washed and dried and ironed. And I think it turned out absolutely amazing. It's so beautiful to me. I just love this color combination. It's, it's almost hypnotic. Like my eyes are just drawn into the center over and over and over again with all the layers of the different colors and just goes deep down into the center there. It's just, oh, I just love this shirt. So those blue lines that are running through the entire project, that's created from the muck. Um, it, had I done a black back on this, I, then I would have called it a spider. Um, but to me, it just looks much more like a peacock feather than a spider. And I'm going to play around with this many more times in all kinds of different color combinations because it just looks so pretty. I've always done the black back, but the blue looks beautiful to me. So what do you guys think of this shirt? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.